Okay, this is another video in the series for Math 1073 for UTSA. Today we're going to be talking about Module 3.1, and this module focuses on uh, function terminology and features. So, the first question <clears throat> says the following exercises, or sorry, for the following exercises, identify the function as a power function, a polynomial function, or an integer. Okay, so there is a little bit of overlap. Some functions qualify as both a power function and a polynomial function. Um, so it, when that does occur, we want to use the most specific term that we can. Okay, so the first function here, f of x equals x squared, this is technically counts as both because a power function will be x to some numerical power, okay, x to the n. For any power function, n could be a fraction or a whole number or a negative number, just any real number. When you have um, a whole number, then it also technically qualifies as a polynomial, but we will still just call it a power function, okay? So we're going to say this is a power function because it has the right form, okay? And if that exponent were like 2.7, it would still be a power function, but it would no longer qualify, technically speaking, as a polynomial function. Uh, so again, so there are some functions that qualify as both, but we will always be more specific and say, oh, power function is more specific than polynomial when both apply. So this other example is a little bit more complicated. We have, um, we have a power function raised to a power. So we can use properties of exponents and turn this into x to the 12th power. So this still has the format of a power function. You have x raised to some numerical power, so we call it a power function. Okay. Again, this technically qualifies as a polynomial as well, but we want to use the more narrow term when available. So when we're distinguishing power versus polynomial, if, if polynomial technically applies, but power applies also, power function is the term that we will use. Okay. So here we have a difference of two power functions, x squared minus x cubed. So individually, this qualifies as a power function, and this one qualifies as a power function, but their difference does not. This is a polynomial function. Basically, uh, polynomial functions, one way to define them in, in words is to say that you have a sum or difference of one or more uh, power functions using whole number exponents only and, and and non-negative whole number exponents only. No negative exponents, no fractional exponents. If I were to have like 2.7 here, then this would not be a power function because power functions can't have two terms. And it would also not be a polynomial if one of the exponents was not a whole number or if one of the exponents was negative. It would cease to qualify for the label polynomial. Okay, next example. Now this one, this is a quotient. And neither power functions nor polynomial functions technically allow uh, uh, quotients. So the top on its own would be a power function, and the bottom on its own would be a polynomial function. Probably should change my stylus size here. There we go. Uh, but the quotient does not qualify as either. Okay, so in this case, we'll say neither. There is a term for this. But we haven't gotten to talking about that kind of function yet, so we will get to that later. I don't remember which module it is. Maybe it's module four. I really don't recall. But we'll get to that soon enough. Okay. Next one. Now, this one <clears throat> looks fairly complicated. We have a lot going on. Basically, I have a product of a bunch of power and polynomial functions. If I were to look at this, this first factor, this is just a power function. This one also technically is a polynomial times another polynomial times another polynomial times a polynomial raised to a whole number exponent. So whenever you have an exponent that's a whole number raised to a polynomial, the result is a polynomial itself. So this factor on its own is a polynomial, and we're multiplying with other polynomials. And the product of one, I'm sorry, the product of two or more polynomials will always qualify as a polynomial. So if we were to FOIL this out or use the distributive property to resolve all the parentheses, we would get something that's a bunch of power functions added up or subtracted. We're not going to bother doing that because the problem doesn't ask us to do that. It just asks us to determine what kind it is. And this is a polynomial function, okay, which I can tell because the factors are all polynomials or powers of polynomials. And I probably should try to spell that right. There we go. Okay, next one. So this one looks simple enough, but it can be deceptive. Oh, there's, there's a power involved. That's a power function, right? Well... Um, the format for a power function is x to some numerical power, which is not what we have here. We have a number raised to a variable power. So although there is a name for this kind of function that's in a later module, 
we're going to say this is neither. We don't have the terminology for it yet. Okay. Well, we sort of do. We're going to repurpose some terminology we have, but we haven't gotten to this kind of function yet. So that's basically the first problem, basically determining whether something is a power function, polynomial function, or neither. And again, there will be some cases where uh, a function will qualify as both a power function and a polynomial function in technical terms, um, but we'll refer to it as a power function. Let me give you an analogy. Maybe that would help. If I had, say, a square, right, and I have a rectangle, right, a square is basically a quadrilateral, I'm sorry, a rectangle is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, right? Quadrilateral meaning four sides. A square is a quadrilateral with four equal sides. Now, if you have four equal sides, well, you automatically have two pairs that are equal, right? This, These two sides are, are the same length, as well as these two sides are the same length. So a square technically qualifies, it meets the definition for being a rectangle, but we don't call it that, right? We call it a square. We use the narrowest term that's available. So this is a direct one-to-one -one analogy. There are power functions that are not polynomials, and there are polynomials that are not power functions, but there is some overlap. So when something qualifies as both, we should call it a power function. We should not call it a polynomial. That's just the way the terminology is used. Okay, next question. For the following exercises, determine the degree leading term and leading coefficient for the given polynomial. Um, as we do these, I'm going to always identify the leading term first, I think. Well, kind of. I'm kind of determining the leading term and the degree at the same time. And leading coefficient, I determine last. Let's look at this first example. Whenever a variable does not have an exponent, it's implied to have an exponent of 1, because exponent tells you how many copies you have multiplied. So if you see 1x, then x to the first power is what you have implicitly. So there's only one term here. So my leading term has to be that one that I have, negative 9x. Okay. And while I was doing this, I determined what the degree was. So the degree, well, that's one. Okay. And I can either say, oh, I determined that first, or I can say that I determined the term that has it first. You kind of do those at the same time, really. So then the leading coefficient would be the coefficient on that term, which is, again, the only one that we have in this example. So there we go, leading term, degree, leading coefficient. So for the next example, I have more than one term. And so when I go to look for the leading term, I need to identify what, what's the biggest degree on the page? What do I see? And I notice, oh, there's a 2 here. Okay, This um, this is not what's called a descending order. Typically, a polynomial will be written to where the highest degree term goes first, and then after it is the next higher uh, degree term, and after it is the next one down. Um, they go the, the exponents decrease as you read from left to right. Right, That's called descending order. So if I wanted to do that for this one, I could rewrite this as 3x squared plus 2. The problem does not ask me to do that, but sometimes I find it helpful to make sure things are in descending order so I don't make a mistake. So the um, degree will be 2, right? And the leading term is 3x squared. As I said, you kind of determine these at the same time. And then the uh, leading coefficient is going to be 3, just the coefficient of that term that we identified. Okay. Later on, we'll discuss how the leading term is the most important in certain ways. Not in every way, but in certain ways. But that's that's for a future module. Okay, so this one is definitely out of order. I notice that I've got an exponent of 5, an exponent of 4. I've got no x at all, and then I have uh, 1x implying an exponent of 1, right? So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to say, oh, well, that's, that's a 1. And on this one, I'm going to put in an x, and I'm going to put a 0 on it. Because x to the 0 power is 1, so when you don't have x at all, it's kind of like you have x to the 0. And for that reason, we'll say that the degree of this term is 0. There are no x's. I don't need to keep it there. I just wanted to illust illustrate why we call this 0. There are none of them there. So definitely, this is the leading term. And I, I don't have to um, rewrite this in descending order. Often I will, but not always. It, it depends. So the degree is 5. And the leading coefficient is negative 5. Okay. And sometimes the, you'll, you'll get a polynomial in order, so other times not. So always pay attention to the order. Do not just go to the first term. Whatever is written first is not necessarily the one that's supposed to go first. Okay, this one, we have to do a little bit more work. And the leading term is not x to the fifth. That might be a conclusion you could jump to. <clears throat> but it's more complicated than that because x to the fifth is not a term at all. It's a factor. So if I want to find out what the leading term is, I'm going to need to do some, some algebra to rearrange this and to see what the leading term is. There are ways to 
cut corners on this and do less writing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do this the long way. Um, and you, But you might notice, oh, I could probably get this answer more easily by cutting out those steps. And you might notice that yourself. So first what I'm going to do is, um, since we're squaring this factor, I'm going to go ahead and write that twice so that when I FOIL, this is as clear as possible. For some of you, this is maybe redundant. You don't need to see this, but for some of you, maybe this is helpful. So when we go to FOIL, we'll have first the two first components, outer, the two outer components, inner, the two inner components, and then last, the two last components. Okay, so x to the fifth times, well, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Um, 2x times negative 7x will be minus 14x. Uh, negative 7 times 2x would be minus 14x. And then negative 7 times negative 7 is plus 49. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I get minus 28x plus 49. And at this point, um, you might be noticing some of the things that are kind of redundant. Because again, look, we're, we're only looking for the leading term and its features. So that 49, we kind of don't need. And the negative 28x... I kind of don't need. I'm going to go ahead and write this out anyway. Um, I'm going to distribute the x to the fifth. So this will be um, 4x to the seventh, right? Minus uh, 28x to the sixth plus 49x to the fifth. Okay. Um, that's not a very good six. There we go. So this is the leading term. This is in descending order because I kept it in order the entire time. So 4x to the seventh. So the degree is seven. And the leading coefficient is 4. Okay, so a little bit more work for that one, but, but not too bad.